Hello, Internet. I'm James Bodie, and this is Relative Motion. In this first season of Relative Motion, we're taking a look at the best piston-powered helicopters in 2021. For this episode, episode 3, we're going to be doing an overview of the Robinson R-22. The Robinson R-22 is the cheapest, air quotes, real helicopter you can buy today. It's widely known as a very good trainer helicopter, which I slightly take issue with, and I will explain why in this video. So, let's get into it. So like I was saying, the Robinson R-22 is really the cheapest full-blown real helicopter. Now the reason I say this is it actually falls into Part 91 of the FAA, which is widely known as the general aviation category for aircraft and encompasses pretty much anyone who owns their own aircraft, where any helicopter below this will fall into Part 103. The Robinson R-22 is a pretty well-known helicopter for a few reasons. One is, it was the first helicopter ever made by the Robinson Company. Now very quickly, the Robinson Company is one of the most famous companies in helicopters, and what they're known for is making a lot of very affordable helicopters. This company was founded in 1973 by Frank Robinson. He had a philosophy that he wanted to make helicopters more accessible to everybody. He was very successful at this and started making the R-22 by 1979. The R-22 is really what started this company. Shortly after that, they introduced the R-44, which we'll be looking at later in this season. And while the R-22 started the company, the R-44 really defined what the company is now, I believe. Now, some people get a little confused, I think, with the philosophy that Frank Robinson had when he started this company. He was really trying to get helicopters accessible to more people, but he was not trying to build a good trainer helicopter, which is really what this helicopter is widely known for today, and I think is kind of unfortunate. And really the reason I think this is a better personal helicopter is, for one, the twin rotor design, which lends itself better to more experienced pilots. Also, a twin rotor is typically better for trying to store it in a garage or a hangar or wherever you're trying to put this, if it's your personal helicopter. And also, the Robinson is known for having a T-bar cyclic. Now, the cyclic is one of the controls for a helicopter. Normally, it comes up through the floor and in between your legs. Now, T-bar cyclic, which this has, comes up through the middle of the helicopter and then basically makes a loop over and then down to a handle that you grab. And it does this in both directions, hence the T shape. Now this design doesn't inherently have any problem. However, if you're gonna use it primarily as a trainer, I definitely don't think this is the best design, largely due to the fact it's hard for both pilots to have their hands on the controls at the same time. And definitely in a learning environment, you want that to happen. Just like in a driver's ed car, how you have two steering wheels. It is worth noting here, however, to be devil's advocate, that the reason for this helicopter's widespread use as a trainer is due to the fact it is the cheapest full-blown helicopter, which is the major factor in trying to keep the cost of getting your license down. And there comes the appeal of this being a trainer helicopter. However, just for safety reasons, I would advise for a trainer helicopter, looking at some of the other helicopters we're gonna look at later in this season, Season. So the advantages of this helicopter being in part 91 is, for one thing, unlike the helicopters we looked at before in this season, which have two-stroke engines, this one has a four-stroke engine made by Lycoming, who I also believe is the best piston aircraft engine manufacturer. Some of the obvious advantages of having a four-stroke engine and this helicopter in general, is it's gonna be more similar to the helicopter you likely trained in compared to something smaller than it. And then also, this aircraft can fill up at any airport easily which makes it much easier trying to make long trips where you have to make stops along the way. So also, because of this helicopter's popularity, it's much easier to get it worked on. So it'll be easier to fix and easier to find parts. I also think this makes it safer because generally the people working on them have worked on them before because of their popularity again. So the really impressive feature about this helicopter that the helicopters previously in the season didn't have is having that second seat. So besides just trying to impress the ladies now, Oh yeah. 
you can take your friends up or anyone else you want to. And then if you have no friends, you can also use it for cargo because this helicopter doesn't have a cargo compartment, although there is some small storage under the seats. But if no one's with you, that second seat provides a good amount of storage for something you want to take with you, like a backpack or other luggage. If you're going to try anything like this though, it's going to need to be really well secured. So even though this helicopter is, again, what I think is the cheapest basically full-blown helicopter, still pretty expensive. If you want one new, you're looking at quarter of a million dollars, but if you're looking for one used, you can find them almost all the way down to $100,000. But you have to be careful because a lot of times you're getting what you pay for. But the real cost of this helicopter is also in using it. This helicopter costs about $150 an hour to operate. So if you just want to make a 150 mile trip and then come back, you just spent $450. Where most vehicles might cost something like $30 to operate per hour, but are much slower, just for a comparison. So in reality, I would say this helicopter costs as much as owning a supercar or something crazy like that. Definitely know what you're getting into. So even for being the smallest helicopter in its class, it has some pretty impressive specs that I would say keep up with other helicopters. It has almost a 300 mile range, which is a very practical distance. It also has the capability of going up to max altitude similar to other helicopters in its class, and has a pretty good speed of 106 miles cruise and 114 miles per hour max. Some of the odd features worth noting about this helicopter though, besides the T-bar cyclic, which we already talked about, it has some styling I would consider a little odd. For one, it has this tall rotor mast, which Robinsons are known for having, which I don't think is the best looking thing, however, to each their own. And then also, hate it or love it, this thing has mostly an exposed engine on the back, which obviously doesn't look the best, but does have the possible upside of the fact that everything is exposed, so it's easier to see problems with the engine if they exist. However, most of the time, you can just open the cowling to do the same thing. But on this machine, it's open to the elements. And the last thing I just want to speak on about the Robinson, which I'm sure I'll speak on with the R44 too, is that these helicopters, I think, in aviation have gotten a bad reputation, which is unfortunate. This is largely due to the fact that because these helicopters are the cheapest option and one of the most popular options, this is the helicopter that typically novices fly. And because of that, they can get themselves into sticky situations, especially if they're cocky. So my argument is, as long as you know what this helicopter can do, and you don't try to do anything else, I really believe this helicopter is very safe. And is probably the safest form of transportation there is. Which I won't totally get into in this video, but just believe me, if you take it serious, flying is very safe. And so are these Robinson helicopters. And with that, that concludes the Robinson R22, which I really think is a great budget option if you want a personal helicopter. The R22 is one of the best personal helicopters you can get, especially if you want one that's fairly practical still, and are on somewhat of a budget. I really hope you have a better understanding of what the R22 is capable of now. If you think I missed something about this helicopter, or you can even take issue with the fact I don't think it's a good trainer, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. And if you'd enjoy more videos like this, consider subscribing, where you can take a look at the next episode of this season. We're going to be looking at the Cabri G2, which is the newest helicopter to this list, and has some really great modern features. However, because of that, it's a little more pricey. So if that sounds interesting, check back for that one. And until next time, I'm James Bodie, and you've been watching Relative Motion. So for e so even for being the hell so e for e so even though this helicopter is the cheapest entry to have really what I again this helicopter doesn't have any this helicopter does not have any help. <laughs>